Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Melderon here, and welcome to another classic WoW.Live guide. On this guide, we'll be talking about mana management and optimization, and how using your stats, you can increase your effective mana pool for raid and dungeon settings. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Egregious, Taladril, and Defcamp for helping me build this guide. And if you want to navigate this guide at your own pace, as with all my guides, there will be a pinned comment below with timestamps, as well as a link to Google Slides so you can view these slides at your own pace. Okay, let's get started. There are a number of different concepts we'll be going over in this guide. First, let's go over what I mean by effective mana pool. Your effective mana pool is the mana you have access to over the duration of an encounter. And that could be a raid encounter, it could be a dungeon encounter, any encounter you want, even a PvP encounter. Your effective mana pool is how much mana you have from before combat to the end of combat. We will also be going over how stats interact with each other to increase this effective mana pool. And then finally, we will explore strategies to increase your uptime depending on your class and role. If you are playing a class with a mana bar in Classic WoW, then you are most likely somewhat familiar with these terms. Intellect, Spirit, MP5, Critical Strike or Heal, and Spell Power. But are you comfortable in comparing them, or do you know when one stat is better than another, and in what situation? If you do not, please do not feel discouraged. These concepts are a bit more complicated than you may realize. Knowing how each of these stats work will improve your effectiveness as a healer or a ranged magical damage dealer. However, things do not stop there. Melee hybrid classes like Feral Druids, Protection, Retribution Paladins, and Enhancement Shaman will also benefit from this guide, as will Hunters. I think the best thing to do first is to define each stat and discuss what they actually do, both universally and on a class-by-class -class basis. Let's start with Intellect. It is one of the five basic stats in the game. Therefore, it will be easy to come across when gearing, during the leveling process, and at endgame. It increases your mana pool by 15 with each point accrued universally for each class. This perhaps makes it an easy stat to discuss and talk about, but it also has another benefit. Each class also gains critical strike chance, healing, and damage at a certain rate per class. The following table shows how much intellect needs to be accrued to gain 1% critical chance for each class at level 60. Interestingly, we can think of critical strike as effective mana since a crit produces additional damage or healing. In this way, you are getting more bang for the buck, if you will. This is more impactful for healers when it comes to mana management as a critical heal can reduce your need to spend more mana directly since your heal was more effective, or also indirectly through buffs like Ancestral Fortitude in Shaman, and Inspiration in Priests, and Illumination in Paladins. The first two buffs increase your friendly target's armor, potentially reducing your need to heal for a period, while Illumination refunds mana. We will discuss critical strikes and heals more in depth in the next section. When I talk about Intellect, I will usually use the words front-loaded, considering that the amount of mana that Intellect provides is static over the course of combat. This means that no amounts of intellect can restore your mana pool over the course of combat, it just makes your mana pool larger. In other words, if you have 100 total intellect, then your mana pool will be 1500 unless you have buffs and or enchants that increase it further. Before we move on, last but not least, intellect also increases the rate at which you accrue weapon skill points. So warriors and rogues, get some intellect buffs. Critical strike and critical heal chance can be acquired via intellect, see the table on the previous slide, talents, gear bonuses, or from critical strike increases from gear enchantments. If obtained from gear, usually the text will read, improves your chance to get a critical strike with spells by some percent. Because it is not one of the five basic stats, it is rare to come across while leveling, but is a common bonus on high level gear. Spell based crits, whether they be damaging spells or heals, provide an additional 50% bonus to the average effect when they occur, unless talents increase that amount. So for example, if you normally heal with a spell for 100, on average, a critical will heal for 150. Some classes can increase their critical strike damage or heal bonus via talents. Let's go over these classes and talents. Shaman have Elemental Fury from the Elemental Tree, which increases critical strike damage bonus of nature spells and offensive totems to 100% from 50. Warlocks have Ruin in the Destruction Tree, which does the same thing for Destruction spells, as Elemental Fury does for Shaman for Lightning spells. Mages have Ice Shards in the Frost Tree, which increases critical strike damage bonus of your Frost spells by 20% each rank up to a total of 100, with 5 out of 5. Druids with Vengeance in the Balance Tree increases critical strike damage bonus of Starfire, Moonfire, and Wrath by 20% each rank up to a total of 100% so very similar to Ice Shards. TLDR, basically all these talents increase the bonus damage from 50% to 100, so your spells will do double damage. So in other words, a spell that normally damages for 100 will now damage for 200 on average. In addition, almost every class has talents that increase their critical strike chance, and these are usually sought after universally regardless of your class or role, since critical strike is very, very impactful. As stated in the intellect section, crits can add to your effective mana both directly through not having to put out as much healing or damage, or indirectly through class-related talents like Inspiration, Ancestral Fortitude, 
and Illumination. For damage dealing casters, critical strikes are not as impactful for saving mana because they still want to do as much damage as possible in a unit time. However, for healers, critical heals can drastically reduce the amount of healing output needed. This is especially true for Paladins who with 5 out of 5 ranks in Illumination get 100% of their mana refunded for that spell. This is perhaps one of the most powerful talents in the game and make Paladins the most mana efficient of the healers once enough crit is accrued. Combining Divine Favor with Illumination also guarantees a critical heal, which in turn guarantees a free cast. It is wise, therefore, to use Divine Favor with a very expensive cast to get the most out of it. It is important to note that Fire Mages with a Master of Elements talent acts like an Illumination Light in that crits can refund up to 30% of their cost. A downside to Critical Strike is that you can easily overheal an ally or overkill a target. This is much less of an issue for damage dealing casters as an overkill can only occur when a mob or boss is about to die, not before. Crits before this point are always beneficial, unless you pull threat. However, for a healer, a critical heal can be essentially wasted in part or in full if that bonus becomes an overheal. Therefore, unless you have a talent that has an added bonus like Inspiration, Illumination, and Ancestral Fortitude, critical heals can and often are wasted. We will talk about the class-specific benefits of crit towards the end of the guide. Now let's talk about Spirit. Spirit is a very interesting and usually undervalued stat. Like Intellect, it is one of the five basic stats and will be a very common stat on gear throughout the game. Spirit's contributions are twofold, as it increases the rate at which you regenerate health outside of combat and the rate that you regenerate mana both inside and outside of combat. However, this mana regeneration, whether you are in combat or not, does not occur all the time. In fact, the mana regenerated from Spirit only starts to occur after you have not been casting for a total of 5 seconds. This is known colloquially as the 5 second rule. After 5 seconds have elapsed, you will receive an increase in mana dependent on your total spirit and your class. After that, as long as you do not cast a single spell, additional mana will begin to be restored in 2 second intervals. The second you complete a cast though, this regeneration will cease until you do not cast again for 5 seconds. An interesting note is that if you have a clear casting buff or proc like Shaman with Elemental Focus and Mages with Arcane Concentration, you will not interrupt your mana regeneration with the ensuing free cast. The amount of mana you will restore in these 2 second intervals depends on how much spirit you have. The more spirit, the more you will restore. However, just like with intellect based crit, the amount of mana and or health that a class will restore per point of spirit is not universal. The table on this slide illustrates how each class benefits from spirit for both health and mana regeneration at level 60. As you can see, warriors and rogues restore far more health out of combat per tick compared to other classes with their rather large coefficients. 0.8 and 0.5 respectively. This is primarily due to the fact that they have no way of healing themselves and cannot mitigate negative debuffs without using consumables. Also perhaps a related concept, since these classes do not have pets to soak damage and deleterious effects, they receive more bonus to their out of combat health regen. Because of this, it is common for warriors and rogues to seek out spirit, or at the very least, save alternative pieces of gear in their inventories with spirit. This is very beneficial during the leveling process as it drastically reduces your downtime. Conversely, it is perhaps not surprising that warlocks have the lowest spirit coefficient due to them having abilities like life tap and drain life, allowing them to cycle between health and mana rather quickly. There are also four classes that receive additional benefits from spirit outside of health and mana regen from talents and gear bonuses, priests, druids, warlocks, and mages. Therefore, it may be prudent to stack more spirit in these classes. Let's go over these abilities and tier set bonuses. For priests, there are a total of three talents that they can get to increase the effectiveness and importance of spirit. Meditation from the Discipline Tree awards 5% each rank up to 15% with 3 out of 3 of spirit-based mana regeneration to occur while casting, and this is inside the 5 second rule. Spiritual Guidance from the Holy Tree increases spell power and healing by 5% each rank up to 25% with 5 out of 5 of your total spirit. Spirit Tap from the Shadow Tree awards a 20% chance each rank up to 100% for your spirit-based mana regeneration to double after a killing blow is dealt that yields experience or honor or would have yielded experience if level capped as long as you are not casting. If you are casting, the rate is increased by 50%. In addition to these benefits, priests can also get more out of their spirit stat by adding on an additional 50% of spirit-based mana regeneration while casting from a three-piece bonus of their tier two, the Vestments of Transcendence, and this effect stacks with meditation. 
Druids only have one talent that benefits from spirit. Reflection from the Restoration Tree awards 5% each rank up to 15% with 3 out of 3 of spirit-based mana regeneration to occur while casting inside the 5 second roll just like priests. Druids, also like priests, can get an extra 15% of spirit-based mana regeneration while casting from their 3-piece tier 2, the Storm Rage Raiment. And this also stacks with Reflection. For mages, Arcane Meditation acts just like Reflection and Meditation in that it rewards 5% each rank up to 15% with 3 out of 3 of spirit-based mana regeneration to occur while casting. Warlocks with improved Drain Soul have a 50% chance each rank, 100% chance if 2 out of 2, for your spirit-based mana regeneration to double after killing an enemy with Drain Soul, as long as you are not casting. If you are casting, the rate is increased by 50%. Because of these additional spirit-related benefits, it is perhaps no surprise that these classes, especially priests, will want to get as much spirit as possible as it partially translate to spell power for priests and in combat mana regen for all of the aforementioned classes. We will get into prioritizing these stats later in the guide. In contrast to intellect, spirit is conditionally backloaded mana, meaning that it only increases effective mana as time elapses. The more time that elapses outside of the 5 second rule, the more effective mana you gain. This is why I call it conditional, since you have to be out of the 5 second rule to see the benefits. However, as previously stated, priests and druids with the corresponding talents do benefit from some 5-15% to 15 of their spirit inside the 5 second rule. This means that spirit is more beneficial to these classes. However, it's important to realize that spirit is not a useless stat for other classes and roles as you will likely be outside the 5 second rule more times than you think during an encounter, especially if you're a healer. If you are a healer, I encourage you to record some of your raid encounters and see how often you actually are outside the 5 second rule. Chances are that you may be surprised how frequent spirit helps you regen mana. Now let's move on to MP5. I like to think of MP5 as Spirit's sibling, as its effect is very similar. However, unlike Spirit, it isn't one of the five basic stats and will be very hard to come by during the leveling process. It is much more common as a gear bonus endgame and is mostly found on healing gear, but not exclusively. MP5 does exactly what you think it does. It restores the amount of mana advertised every five seconds. All you have to do is add up how much MP5 you currently have equipped, and that amount will be refunded to you every five seconds. However, there are two important caveats. The first is that mana restores doesn't come in 5 second intervals at all. That's right, it's called MP5, but it doesn't actually restore mana every 5 seconds. Like Spirit, it restores mana in 2 second intervals. I'm not sure why this is the case, but I think it's likely a scaling issue. I think it'd be weird to say restores 0.6 mana every 2 seconds. I think the developers just round it up to a number that makes more sense, so that the stat feels more impactful. Additionally, 5 seconds is a pretty long time when in combat. Getting some mana every 2 seconds is a much more regular and perhaps optimal rate. Rest assured though, you will still get all of the mana you're supposed to. You just get a fraction of your total MP5 across shorter intervals. The second and most important caveat is that MP5 occurs all the time. Yes, MP5 restores mana whether you're in combat, out of combat, inside the 5 second rule, outside the 5 second rule, casting or not casting. As long as you have mana to restore, MP5 will keep chugging away, giving you mana back. This property of MP5 makes it highly sought after stat by healers and damage dealers alike. However, as stated previously, it is usually found on gear that grants healing spell power and not damage. Because of the benefits of MP5, it is classically a high priority stat for paladin and shaman healers due to the fact that these healers do not benefit from spirit in any additional capacity. However, it would not be wise to totally ignore this stat if you are a priest or druid. We will get into this more in depth a bit later in the guide. There are four tier bonuses that grant MP5. Let's go over them now. Shaman, the Augur's Regalia from ZG, as a two-piece set bonus restores four mana per five seconds. Another Shaman piece, the Earth Shatterer, which is tier three, the AP set bonus provides while Lightning Shield is active, you restore 15 mana per five seconds. Interestingly, this is the precursor for Water Shield in Burning Crusade. I think that's really cool. For Druids, also from ZG, the Hyro Specs Garb, two piece set bonus restores four mana per five seconds, and the Paladin ZG, two piece set bonus, the Free Thinker's Armor also restores four mana per five seconds. Like Spirit, we can also think of MP5 as backloaded mana. However, unlike Spirit, MP5 is not conditionally backloaded. You don't have to wait 5 seconds for the mana regen to occur. It happens all the time. That being said, MP5, like Spirit, becomes more effective the longer you are in combat. Additionally, since it is not conditional, MP5's usefulness scales better with elapsed time. With Spirit, you don't have any control over when you will be regenerating mana as you don't know how often you will need to heal in most encounters. So, fight length is not something you can accurately model when considering spirit. However, with MP5, fight length is the main factor you will care about when budgeting this stat. For damage dealers, MP5 will almost universally be better than spirit since you are constantly casting. We will get into this more in depth when we talk about spell power, which is next.
Spell Power is a highly sought after stat by healers and damage dealers alike, as it flat out increases the damage and or healing that your spells can produce. It is not one of the basic stats, but it gets increasingly more common as a bonus stat on gear as you gain levels. By endgame, almost all best in slot items sport some bonus of Spell Power. It is important to realize that there are three different kinds of Spell Power bonuses found on gear. School specific, which the bonus spell damage is only applied to spells belonging to a specific school. An example would be a piece of, of Nature's Wrath gear. If you are a mage and use this item, none of your spells will receive bonus damage. However, if worn by a shaman, all lightning spells will receive the bonus spell power. Make sure to know which schools your spells belong to. Damage and healing. The bonuses from this gear can apply to both damaging spells, regardless of school, and healing spells. The text in the tooltip will usually read, increases damage and healing done by magical spells and effects by up to some number. This gear is primarily sought after by damage dealers, but some best in slot items for healers are also this type. And finally, we have healing only. The bonuses on these pieces only increase the effect of healing spells, not damaging spells. The text in the tooltip will usually read, increases healing done by spells and effects by up to X. Obviously, these pieces will only benefit healers. And to make these more sought after by healers, healing only pieces provide more bonus spell power than damage and healing pieces of the same or similar item level. So try not to roll on damage gear if you are a healer unless there is no other option. Now let's very briefly talk about spell coefficients and down ranking. It's brief because I go over the idiosyncrasies of spell coefficients and down ranking in the Classic WoW down ranking guide and tool video, which the thumbnail is shown on this slide, and there will be a link for it in the description below. Additionally, under the guidance of Osgar, I help produce an interactive tool at WoWDownRank.com that lets you see how spell coefficients affect mana efficiency as available spell power increases. So if you want to know about down ranking and spell coefficients, watch the video because I go over these concepts much more in them. But briefly, in the vast majority of spells, not all of your bonus spell power goes to your spells. If you have ever read a tooltip with bonus spell power, you have probably noticed the up to language. This does not mean there is some hidden RNG that determines how much of your bonus spell power gets applied to a spell. What it does mean is that each spell in the game receives a proportion of your total bonus spell power, and this is mostly determined by the spell's cast time. For example, the Shaman spell Lightning Bolt Rank 10 has a cast time of 3 seconds. The reference cast time in WoW Classic is 3.5 seconds. Therefore, Lightning Bolt Rank 10 receives 86% of your bonus spell power. This because the number 3 is 86% of 3.5. Things get much more complicated with overtime spells, AoE spells, and even some normal hardcast spells. I will not go over this here. Please watch the video if you want to learn more. One very, very important thing to realize is that bonus spell power increases the mana efficiency of the lower rank spells at a much higher rate compared to higher rank spells. This is due to the fact that bonus spell power results in a larger percent increase in overall effect the lower the spell's rank. This is actually easy to think about. Healing Wave rank 4 only heals for 279 to 328, while Healing Wave rank 10 heals for 1620 to 1850. If you gain 500 spell power, which is easily attainable in MC, and is 430 spell power after we multiply it by the coefficient, that results in a percent increase to Healing Wave rank 4 of 100 and 41% after the spell coefficient reduction. For healing wave rank 10, it's only a 25% increase. This is why downranking your spells is so important, as the mana cost of spells always remains constant unless talents further reduce them. Downranking allows you to cast more in a given amount of time. For healers, you rarely need to use max rank heals unless there is some emergency. Therefore, spell power can increase your mana efficiency greatly because of downranking. I'm sure you're wondering about damage dealers. If your primary goal in a raid or dungeon is to do damage, then you will likely not downrank unless you are going to run out of mana and have no consumables and or cooldowns at your disposal. Despite increases in spell power making lower ranks more mana efficient, increasing their DPME, higher ranks will always just produce more raw output. This is why, for damage dealers, downranking is not commonly done. However, for hybrid casters like Balanced Druids and Elemental Shaman, who lack abilities like Life Tap and Evocation, downranking may be much more common. Like Critical Strike, we can also think of spell power as adding to your total effective mana pool. This is because the more spell power you have, the less you will have to cast. This works synergistically with downranking as you can now effectively use lower ranks of spells more often, saving a lot of mana. 
For damage dealers, as stated above, spell power as mana is not really pertinent. You will still be casting as hard as you can to produce the most damage possible in a given encounter. However, you may not notice this at first, but after weeks of clearing the same raid, the kill times of trash and bosses will decrease. This is partially because the more geared your raid becomes, the more spell power your caster core will accrue, and the quicker you will kill bosses. Therefore, it may take a while to realize this as a caster, but the more spell power you and your allies have, the more mana you will save in the long run. This will allow you to save money on consumables, or save your cooldowns for when you need them most. For healers, the benefits of spell power are much more apparent to the individual. The more spell power you have, the less frequent you will have to heal, and the more lower ranked spells you can use in your arsenal. Because of this, as your raid progresses, you will notice that you will spend less mana than when you did when you first entered the raid. This may seem a bit strange at first, but it occurs for two reasons. One, you don't need to heal as much as you once did because your raid is more geared, and two, more spell power leads to more downranking, saving you mana. Also, as with damage dealers, the more geared your healing core gets as a whole, the more powerful this effect will become. For instance, in my raid, we converted two healers to DPS recently because we just don't need as many healers now on farm status as we did during progression. It is important to realize how your spell power can increase your effective mana pool during encounters. Just don't mindlessly heal because you feel like you have to. If you don't need to throw out a heal, regen some mana from your MP5 and your spirit. Finally, let's discuss consumables, talents, and buffs. As we discussed with Spirit, talents can increase any of the stats we have already talked about, as well as add new effects like in Spiritual Guidance in Priests. Just try to be mindful of which talents increase your stats effectiveness. As far as consumables go, there are primarily two types of consumables that casters and healers will want to have on them during raids or even in dungeon settings that add to your effective mana pool, mana potions, and dark or demonic runes. Potions and runes have different two minute cooldowns and can be used one after another to restore mana. Always try to have one or both of these items on you at all times. Finally, we can talk about buffs. Buffs usually act by increasing a stat which we have already talked about, and therefore technically can be considered flat additions to those stats. They can come in the form of elixirs, flasks, food buffs, world buffs, etc. However, some buffs and enchants statically increase your mana pool outside of stats like enchant chest major mana. These also add to your effective mana pool. As a healer or caster, try to accrue as much effective mana as you can from all sources. Now let's get into how to budget stats on a class by class basis and how certain factors can significantly alter stat weights. When we put everything together, we can imagine an equation that looks something like the first equation, equation one. We have intellect, crit, spirit, mp5, and spell power all adding up to create an effective mana pool. But as we know in reality, there are more items that we can add to this equation, like runes, potions, and buffs. It looks better, but we need to make it a little bit more complicated. Equation 3 is closer to what reality is, where T is time in this equation. Now this is a much more complicated equation with many factors we need to consider, and this makes creating stat weights pretty complicated. However, we can make some proper guidelines and assumptions thanks to the time term in the equation 3. Time changes everything. The longer the fight, the less intellect matters, while spirit and MP5 become more impactful. Conversely, in a short fight, front-loaded mana from intellect and spell power will carry you through, while there just isn't enough time for spirit and MP5 to make an impact. Let's look at some comparisons to make sense of all this. 1 intellect equals 15 mana. Intellect is an easy baseline metric for us to compare things. For 1 MP5 to be equivalent to 1 intellect, it would take 75 seconds of elapsed time, and that's 1 minute and 15 seconds. This is because 1 MP5 restores 1 mana every 5 seconds. So it would take 75 seconds for this amount of MP5 to restore 15 mana or 1 intellect worth of mana. Therefore, we can think of MP5's effectiveness scaling non-linearly with time. Before 75 seconds, MP5 is rather weak. However, after 75 seconds, its effect becomes much more pronounced, increasing exponentially and surpassing intellect. Intellect, on the other hand, begins to decrease in effectiveness around 75 seconds in an opposite way. The plot on this slide is an attempt to create a visual representation of a concept that has a lot of moving parts. However, in general, think of MP5 maturing and getting more potent as the length of the fight increases. MP5 is very easy because it universally restores mana at the same rate for each class. When MP5 restores 1 mana every 5 seconds for every class, with mana in the game. For Spirit, our answer is not universal as some classes benefit from Spirit slightly differently. The table on this slide shows for each class how much time needs to elapse outside of the 5 second rule for one Spirit to equal or surpass one Intellect. Unfortunately, since Spirit regenerates mana every 2 seconds, after you don't cast for a total of 5 seconds, the answers are not as clean compared to MP5. Remember that this table does not take into account additional benefits from Spirit from Talents and Gear. 
For all of the results in the rounded column in the table, it actually takes less than the time shown for one spirit to equal one intellect. But since spirit works every two seconds, it appears more universal than it actually is. That's why in the last column, I give you the actual rates. You may be thinking, why are none of these two seconds? Shouldn't druids, hunters, paladins, and shaman reach equal weights of spirit and intellect after two seconds? Remember, your first tick of spirit occurs after you do not heal for five seconds, and then each subsequent tick happens every two seconds while you're not casting. So if you want to know how long it will take for one point of spirit to equal one point of intellect after the first five seconds or the first tick, just subtract three from the total time in seconds from the table. For classes with talents that allow for some of your spirit-based mana regeneration to occur while casting, that mana will always regenerate every two seconds. You're likely thinking now, wow, spirit is so much better than intellect and MP5. For priests, you may be onto something, but remember that in order for most classes to benefit from spirit, you have to stop casting for five whole seconds. That may not seem like a lot of time, but it really is, especially for damage dealers. Outside of a mechanic that makes you move across the room, can you mages or warlocks think of a time you have stopped DPS for five seconds or more? Likely not. Therefore, MP5 is more useful compared to spirit under most conditions for damage dealers. However, for healers, even if we don't consider the added benefits that druids and priests get from spirit, you'd be surprised how many times you gain some spirit-based mana regeneration during an encounter. Sometimes as a healer, you don't have to heal, while in other encounters you are healing constantly. Therefore, spirit for paladins and shaman is not a worthless stat. Now don't get me wrong, I wouldn't go buy a bunch of green spirit gear in the AH, but I also wouldn't be scared of this stat if it is on a piece of gear that would be an upgrade or side grade. As a healer, I highly recommend having different pieces of gear for different encounters of different durations. This is because, as with MP5, spirit's effectiveness becomes higher the longer the fight. We have two more stats to talk about before we move on to class-specific stat budgeting, crit and spell power. Crit is a very hard stat to think about as a healer, unless you are a paladin, because it's unpredictable in two ways. One, you don't know if it will occur or not, and two, you may overheal the target. The RNG nature of crit means that you can't rely on it, and overheals do not add to your effective mana pool because they will not assist you or your raid in any positive way. For these reasons, most healers just grab crit if it's part of an upgrade or a set bonus. In horde raids, since there are so many shaman and priests, ancestral fortitude and inspiration are almost guaranteed to be on the melee and tanks, the people that actually need it. This occurs primarily due to chain heal. And in alliance raids, priests will provide inspiration to tanks while paladins can quickly heal all their targets with fast, cheap heals. Now for casters, things are very different. Many damage dealing caster classes like mages and elemental shaman hold crit very high in their stat priorities. Since crit is a flat increase to damage, most casters will take as much as they can. Finally, we have spell power. This is even harder to discuss because there are so many different spell coefficients in the game as well as many spell effect ranges. So what I will do is provide example calculations using some shaman and druid spells to answer the question of how much spell power is equal to one point of intellect or 15 effective mana for these spells. In the table on this slide, there are four spells, Earth Shock, Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, and Healing Touch. The ranks, the coefficients, the average effect, and the mana cost are all on the table. To determine the effect per 15 mana, you divide the average effect by the mana cost and multiply by 15. And then to determine how much spell power is needed to equal that much effect, you divide the effect per 15 mana by the spell coefficient. So for Earthshock, 44.25 spell power is equal to one intellect. That's how you would do this. Yeah, you will have to calculate how much spell power is equal to one intellect for each rank of each spell in the game. Not only does this math take time, but you must know each spell's coefficient. This is why it's hard to determine how to weigh spell power compared to intellect. Thankfully, for most gear at endgame, you will acquire both intellect and spell power. This makes budgeting and balancing both of these stats that's quite easy. As a general rule, however, you want to prioritize intellect over spell power for long fights while doing the reverse for short ones. Now, there are some exceptions to this, of course. Mages and warlocks don't have to worry as much about intellect, while healers do. So for healers, prioritizing intellect over spell power may be more beneficial for long-term fights, but for most caster classes, you want to get as much spell power as you can. Speaking of budgeting, let's get into that for each class. Determining the order in which you should seek these stats is highly dependent upon your class and your talents. The suggestions below are based on theory and the personal experiences of myself and close colleagues. Therefore, different stat weights may make more sense to you. This is especially true when you consider the type of guild you are in, as guilds with higher skill will clear raids much faster, making intellect sometimes far superior. On the other hand, if your guild is more casual, encounters may take a lot longer, making spirit MP5 more impactful. It's important to consider your personal preferences and your environment when budgeting stats. Simply use this guide as a learning tool to make more informed decisions. I don't go over this in this this guide, 
because this guide is all about mana management. However, if you are a DPS class, acquiring spell hit, the cap is 16%, is very important in addition to increasing your effective mana pool. Usually you want to prioritize increasing hit first, but this is class dependent. Seek out individual PvE guides to determine where hit fits in the grand scheme. Healing unlike damage is unique in that you don't need any spell hit rating to heal a target. Heals are guaranteed to land unless your target has a debuff, they run out of range, or they are dead. Let's now look at stat budgeting suggestions for each class. Hunters, you guys are the easiest we will do you first. There really isn't that much room for choice when it comes to gear as your tier sets are really great. You'll likely notice that your tier pieces provide you a good amount of intellect that should make lasting an encounter generally easy considering your abilities are far less expensive compared to those of casters. If you are having issues for some reason, consider bringing some major mana potions and darker demonic runes with you to a raid. If you are a nightfall procker, you will be spamming wing clip rank 1 over and over again. Since this ability only costs 40 mana, this should not drain your mana pool in any significant way as long as you have a healthy amount of tier gear and buffs. You warlocks are pretty lucky. Life Tap is an extremely useful talent as it converts health to mana, allowing warlocks to have a theoretical limitless mana pool, as long as your healers aren't sleeping, that is. Due to Life Tap, you can really go crazy with spell power and get as much as you can. However, having a healthy mana pool is also important as you want to limit life tapping as much as you can to give your healers a break. Therefore, I would suggest prioritizing spell power first and then get as much critical strike as you possibly can because of Ruin. This talent will make your shadow bolts hit like a truck. After these two stats, Prioritize Intellect over MP5 and Spirit in that order to build a nice mana pool. Mages, like Warlocks, have abilities that drastically increase their effective mana pools. Evocation grants almost another full mana bar, while Mana Gems, which share a cooldown with Dark and Demonic Runes, can provide mana in an instant. Because of this, like Warlocks, you should budget Spell Power and Crit to make use of Ice Shards if Frost or Ignite if Fire first before looking to boost your mana pool with Intellect, MP5, and Spirit in that order. Whether you are a Balance or Resto, you will likely have the Reflection talent to get some bonus mana regeneration while casting from your spirit. So for every 1 point of spirit you have, you will gain 2.28 mana every 2 seconds while casting. That really isn't that shabby at all, as it will only take 7 ticks to regenerate 1 intellect's worth of mana. However, it's not enough to drastically alter your stat priority as a Balanced Druid. What stat to focus on as a Balanced Druid is highly phase dependent. Because Balanced Druids will find it hard to get hit cap before ZG gear, the main stat to focus on is Spell Power. Once you get over 400 spell power or so, move into getting crit to really make your vengeance talent work while also gathering intellect to build up your mana pool. Early on, spell power provides more stable DPS throughout fights and makes up for the lack of effective mana. Just make sure to load up on consumables like major mana potions and dark and demonic runes so you can stay up during longer encounters. For especially long fights, you may want to consider switching in some intellect and spirit gear so you can last considering that balanced druids will usually innervate healers over themselves. Later in the game, you should have accrued enough intellect, spirit, and mp5 via gear to be more comfortable in most encounters. As far as resto druids are concerned, Taldril recommends going for spell power first, considering how efficient healing touch is. Remember that healing touch is the only 3.5 second heal in the game, meaning that it receives 100% of your bonus spell power. Landing such a long cast can be tricky, but if you do, you can really make an impact. After this, you should stack intellect, spirit, and mp5 in that order. Now onto Priests. Healing Priests benefit a lot from Spirit. However, Shadow Priests usually only spec into Meditation. Therefore, Spirit is not as important for them compared to Spell Power, Intellect, and surprisingly, MP5. Because Shadow Priests can run out of mana very quickly and will not have a large base of Spirit, especially early on, it may be more prudent to stack some MP5 over Intellect. This may be challenging since finding Spell Damage gear with MP5 isn't easy, but I suggest getting as much as you can. Your priority should look like Spell Power, MP5, Intellect, Spirit, then Crit, in that order. Now for Healing Priests. Regardless of your build, unless you're a Power Infusion spec, you should have both Meditation and Spiritual Guidance. Because of this, Spirit is very important as you will restore 2 mana per 2 seconds while casting and receive 0.25 Spell Power for every point of Spirit you have. This is super impactful and makes Spirit a stat you will strive to get. However, you will still want to get as much Healing Power as you can first. And after that, Def Camp highly suggests building a nice mana pool. Not too little, but not too much either. You want to acquire enough to feel comfortable knowing you can last the fight. 
Once you attain this, stack as much spirit as you possibly can. It will be especially useful in longer fights while also making your heals have higher throughput. Spirit is really a win-win. However, crit and MP5 are not useless considering crit can increase your chance to apply inspiration, and MP5 will restore mana regardless of what you are currently doing. You should not shy away from either stat, especially MP5, if these stats are found on a potential upgrade. Elemental Shaman are all about that crit thanks to Elemental Fury, making their lightning crits do double damage. Get as much as you can, but also really look out for bonus spell power as Lightning Bolt scales very well with it with an 86% coefficient. Now things get a bit tricky. Since both Elemental Shaman and Restoration Shaman cast a lot and do not receive any bonuses from Spirit like Druids and Priests do, budgeting MP5 and Intellect really depends upon fight length. Because of this, I try to keep two sets of gear in my bags. A set with lower intellect and spell power, but more MP5 for longer fights, and a set with high spell power and intellect for shorter ones. MP5 is much harder to come across in gear with spell power, but hold on to any pieces that you do get. Also remember that Shaman have their own pocket MP5 generators at their disposal in the forms of Mana Spring Totem and Mana Tide Totem. Mana Tide is only available to 31 point Restoration Shaman. Since these totems cost mana though, make sure to stick near them for as long as you can to get the full effect. You will have to spend 20 seconds in the range of your Mana Spring Totem to net gain mana. Spirit is not a horrible stat, but it's not something you should be searching for either. If some spirit comes on gear that is an upgrade, great. If not, don't bother. Lastly, like Bounce Druids, it is imperative that you take Major Mana Potions and Darker Demonic Runes for long encounters. Rest of Shaman have it kind of hard early on before Phase 5. There are currently two schools of thought, Stack MP5 or Stack Healing Power. There are two things that tend to dictate which build you should go with. The first is whether you're tank healing or not, and the second is how long the fight is. I highly suggest checking out the Egregious Classic Resto Shaman Progressive Biss list to really understand what I'm trying to convey. However, the Tier 1 pieces provide excellent MP5 even throughout BWL and are excellent for longer fights and really boost your healing wave effectiveness. Conversely, the off-tier pieces from MC and Tier 2 provide higher levels of healing power for shorter fights while also boosting Chain Heal to increase your raid healing potential. Again, which itemization you go with is really dependent on fight length and your healing role within your Shaman core. Ideally, at some point, all Shamans should gather both sets to heal well in any environment. As with Elemental Shaman, Spirit is not sought after, but should not be avoided if it's part of an upgrade. After BWL, gear choice becomes streamlined, as you will likely have a healthy balance of all the important stats, spell power, intellect, and MP5. Briefly, if you are an Enhancement Shaman, you will likely be both totem twisting and proccing either Annihilator or Nightfall, while also helping out the healers. Because of this, make sure to have some pieces with Intellect and MP5, and plenty of consumables to keep your twisting up. Okay, last but not least, Paladins. Let's briefly discuss both Retribution and Protection. Both of these specs, even though they are melee, rely heavily on mana considering all their abilities outside of auto attacks require it. However, due to the importance of damage mitigation stats for tanking, Protection Paladins don't have a lot of room for Intellect, let alone Spirit and MP5, on their gear budgets. Retribution Paladins suffer a similar issue in that damage increasing stats are too important to pass up. Abilities like Seal of Wisdom and Blessing of Wisdom can help mana management, but in reality, the only suggestion I can give is to try to get as much intellect as you can without hindering your damage output or threat generation. Also, consumables like Major Mana Potions and Dark and Demonic Runes may be extremely useful. Try to accrue as many as you can. For Holy Paladins, things are much more clear cut. Because of Illumination, healing crit is vastly important. However, you want to stack spell power and intellect in that order first to create a healthy base of healing throughput and total capacity. Due to the rate at which Paladins accrue crit from intellect, they only need approximately half as much as other classes to gain 1% crit, around 30 intellect, you will effectively be killing two birds with one stone. While gathering spell power and intellect, get as much crit as possible as it serves as your primary source of mana efficiency, again, due to illumination. MP5 and Spirit are well and good, but tend to pale in comparison to crit, even in longer fights. Because of Illumination and the Intellect to Crit ratio, Paladins are the most mana efficient healers in Classic WoW. Your priority should be Spell Power, Intellect, Crit, MP5, and Spirit in that order. Well, we covered a lot of ground. I appreciate you making it this far. There are many concepts we covered, and I understand if you don't grasp all of this. However, I feel that knowing how each of these important stats affect your overall mana pool is essential to healing or DPSing as a caster in Classic WoW. 
Therefore, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know in the thread below or hit me up on Discord at Meldoron hashtag 1287. I will try to reply as quickly as I can. Before I say goodbye, I'd like to summarize this guide in a few sentences. I feel that the main takeaway is that certain variables like fight length, guild capacity, and role can sometimes, depending on your class, really alter which stats are important. Spending time to think about which stats are best for you or for a certain encounter can really improve your overall experience. Finally, if you are a healer, really spend time to understand how downranking works and which heals you likely should hotkey. Most of the time, you should have three to four ranks of each of your healing spells on your bar for each and every circumstance. Well, everyone, we've made it. Thank you so much for watching this guide. I want to thank Egregious, Def Camp, and Taladril for helping with the construction of this guide, and I'm looking forward to the next one. In the meantime, if you like this content, please leave a like below. If you want to be notified of new Def Camp and Melderon TV content on YouTube, subscribe and hit the notification bell to be up to date on all of our content. This guide, along with many others, will be available on Classic Wild Out Live, a source for guides, a source for forums, and a source for tools for the Classic Wild community. You can even upload your own guides to Classic Wild Out Live using our submit button. And last but not least, I want to thank my patrons and the stream team for the the support of our channel. Thank you so much for supporting us in any way you can. We really appreciate it and you really help us improve the quality of our guides. Thank you again for watching. Keep on keybinding and grinding and have a wonderful time in Classic Azeroth. Take it easy. Greetings adventurers, Melderon here. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you'd like to sport some official Def Camp Melderon t-shirts and hoodies, head on over to Brand Young Media's Def Camp Melderon TV merchandise website. The link is in the description below.